children of the most high God, then each one of you have the potential to be a God. Yes, sir. But your potential is only realized by your coming into a greater knowledge of truth. Yes, and that's why Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth will set you free. Free from what? Free from the power of falsehood to rule and govern your lives. Yes, sir. What did Moses say to Pharaoh? Let my people go. What did Jesus say to Satan where Lazarus was concerned? Loose him. Yes, sir. Let him go. Yes, sir. The white man's falsehood got you in a grip. And now truth has come to loose you from that grip so that you could feed on truth and become the powerful man and the powerful woman that you were born to be. But then you got a job to do for God. Now, when you know the truth, the next thing is developing the strength to act on its principles. I know the truth, but now I have to sustain my body in such a way that I don't offend the truth. So I don't want to smoke. Not because it's against my religion. I don't want to smoke because it's against the principle of life. Yes, sir. I'm alive. I want to live. Yes, sir. I don't want to disrespect the giver of life and the gift of life that he has given me by smoking death. So away with the cigarette. So I can stay here to fight the fight that God has brought me here to fight. Away with the cigarette. Give me a drink. A drink of what? Pure water. This is life. Pure milk, that's life. Pure juice, that's life. Alcohol is not pure. It has its value, but it should never be consumed for pleasure. I need your way out, huh? Oh, well, I, I, <laughs> I, I wasn't drinking for pleasure. I was drinking because uh, I was a little sad. I was a little down. <laughs> when you get down, the way to get up is go to Allah. Not to the bottle. Not to the crack. Not to the drug. Go to Allah. Talk to him. He will allow you to get up. Now look. The first step in becoming a new person is to clean up. You must allow truth to wash you. If you bathe in pure water, you're clean physically. If you allow truth to bathe you, you come up clean spiritually. You understand? Yes, That's what baptism is all about. Yes, it's not about letting somebody dunk you in water. It's about being baptized with truth coming out of that baptism, a new person. You're not new getting in the water. You may feel new. But if you think like you used to think, you just are feel-good, old-thinking Negro. 
You understand? Yes, sir. So, truth will wash you. Truth will cleanse you if you allow it. Now, after washing, truth will build character. This is so important in Satan's world. Character building. You know, they call me the Honorable Minister Firecon. Yes, sir. I've never asked nobody to give me no title. I've never asked one of you to call me the Honorable. But I am. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's right, Brother Firecon. Yes, no, no, no. Don't applaud. Don't applaud. It's not necessary. Because I can't make myself that by saying it. I make myself that by living it. Yes, sir. I am honorable. Yes, sir. But I didn't ask anybody to call me that. But of all the black people that are leading black people, Brother Farrakhan has a reputation like the prophet. Yes, That's right. El Amin. Yes, That's sir. right. He's faithful. faithful. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Go ahead, brother. He's noble. Yes, sir. He's generous. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He's truthful. Yes sir. yes, sir. I ain't no saint, but I am. Yes, sir. Come on. Go ahead. Only God can make you righteous. Yes, your mother can't do it. Your father can't do it. Every one of you that love righteousness, you try to make your child like that. But the child may be at your table but not eating from you. Yes, sir. You can't make no child righteous. Yes, sir. Only God can make a righteous child. Yes, sir. Now listen. Yes, sir. My mother beat the hell out of me yes, sir. for lying. I thank her. Yes, sir. She used to really put it on me for lying. And you know what? In truth, I learned a valuable lesson when I was 10 years old. One of my friends had a white pearl handled knife. And when he wasn't looking, I put it in my pocket. And I went home with that boy's knife. The next day, he came to me. He said, Gene, uh, that's the way they used to call me back then. Gene, uh, did you see my knife? And I said, no. Now, when you're lying, it's something about a lie. You're not comfortable with it. If you're born of God, you're comfortable with lying if you're not. But if you're born of God, you can't lie and not feel the effect of the lie. I told that boy, I, I didn't see it. Yeah, I remember I, I had it in my hand. I was playing with it, but I put it down. And when my friend left that house, I felt so cheap. I felt so low down. From that day, I determined. I don't like that feeling. No, that's right. I ain't lying. Now, mom would beat the hell out of me for lying, but that lesson yes, sir. Yes, sir. stayed with me. Yes, sir. You understand? Yes, sir. Stealing and lying. I didn't like that. Yes, sir. From that day to this, I don't take nothing that don't belong to me. I don't steal. No, I want you to listen. Yes, sir. Because I'm telling you something bigger than 
pumping up myself. From that day, man, I've stole nothing from nobody. They put in my hand the treasures of the Muslims. When I was a young minister, we didn't have a lot of money. And I had it in a little safe in my house. And the enemies threw Molotov cocktails in the house to burn me and my family up. When I got my family out, I was going back in the flames to get the Muslims money. It wasn't much. But it was a principle involved yes, that when you got a trust, you don't steal. You don't borrow. I, I need a, a, a loaf of bread. Well, the Muslims ain't gonna mind. Shit, I'll just take this and get the damn bread. Yes, I'll put it back. Yes, but you always find you don't quite make it to put it back. Then next week you need something else. And then the week after that you need something else. And the people that put trust and confidence in you, now you got to stand up and lie. Well, I, uh, no, I, where, where, no, it, what, who took, no, I did it was, look, it was right. <laughs> Go ahead, wake us up. Thieves. Yes, sir, wake us up. Go with lying. Yes, sir and murder go with stealing. From that day at 10 years old, I said, never again. I don't like the feeling of being caught in a lie. I like the feeling of being free. Yes, sir. I'm sure you would like that feeling yes, too. Sir. Yes, sir. As a young entertainer, I wanted to be big in show business. But there was a route that I wanted to take that my friends didn't want to take. The girls, silly sometimes, yes, over star quality. You understand? Y'all yes, yes, sir. Sir. know what I'm talking about. I would tell my friends, have one girl and leave them alone. They didn't believe that. All of them gone, yes, sir. dead, and ain't none of them successful. Here I am. Yes, sir. Beautiful women. And they love me. Yes, sir. I leave them alone. Cause this ain't no field to play with. That's right, bro. That's right. This is serious here. Yes, sir. This is death if you don't handle this right. Oh yes, yeah, that's right. Yes, sir. When truth comes, if you build your life on truth, then character comes. Yes, sir. Every time you lie, you cut away character. Every time you tell truth, you build character. All righteous character has as its foundation truth and honesty. I don't borrow money. And when I borrow, I pay. I borrowed money from my uncle when I first became a Muslim. To pay my rent, $75. But I paid my uncle back. And I never borrowed from a Muslim again. And this is near 40 years. My family ate beans. Not for a day for years and I had the treasures of the Muslims in my hand but I would never take not a damn dime 
for a loaf of bread. We'll eat what we got. But I won't steal. I'm talking about building character in order to wage a war. It ain't just you got to be right for right's sake. You got to be right to overcome the world and the wicked ruler of the world. Yes, sir. Because that's the fight that we're in right now to reclaim our people. It's a war against an unseen power that now has become very seen. I'll get to that in a couple of seconds. Y'all all right? Yes, sir. Now listen, I'm not trying to paint myself as some outstanding person. That's not what I'm doing. Because I know that every one of you can attain what I have attained and even greater if you make up your minds to respect the truth. I learned from a young boy not to gamble. I went to the ballpark one day and I had 10 cent in my pocket. And with that 10 cent, I planned to buy a double scoop of ice cream. Yes, sir. And somebody told me that they would give me 20 cents if such and such team that we were watching won. I bet the dime and lost. <laughs> and the vision of my ice cream cone <laughs> went out the window. And from that day to this, I said, I'm going to hold on to what I got, but I will never gamble my substance in hopes of getting more and then lose what you got. So, Brother Farrakhan, don't gamble. I don't give a damn if they offered me the lottery and said I could win $50 million. And all I got to do is put up a dollar. You keep your money. Yes, sir. You might say, man, Farrakhan, you a damn fool. <laughs> For a dollar, 50 million? You, well, look, man, you ain't, you ain't got, you, you, I can't follow you, Farrakhan. You ain't got no sense. <laughs> I got too much. That's right. <laughs> For a fool. Yes, sir. <laughs> too much. Yes, sir. Suppose you want it. Just look at you. Poor, ragged, hungry, and a damn fool on top of it. Because if you had sense, you'd have sense. Yes, sir. I hear you. I hear you. And if that, see, if you had sense, you'd have you turn them cents into dollars. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But since you don't have no money. That says you don't have enough sense. Yes, sir. Okay, okay. So now somebody tells you you can ride in on a one dollar ticket. Yes, sir. So you go ahead, put your dollar down. You get fifty million. Whoa! I'm rich. Oh man! <laughs> All of a sudden, your per your personality changes. Yes, sir. You used to try to get a job. You don't have to work now. Yes, sir. You got a wife and you got children, but now you got money. And you don't know what to do with it. Yes, sir. You can only get so much a year. You can't give it to your mother, father. You can't will it to nobody. And they are still betting that in 20 years you won't make it. And most of the people that win the lottery, check them out. They never live to spend the damn money. Do you know why? Because the money so altered their lifestyle. Yes, sir. 
till they couldn't handle having money because they didn't know what to do with it before they got it. And that's why the books say a fool and his money will soon part. So I don't gamble. And I didn't have to read the Quran or go to Sunday school to learn that lesson. I learned it from a 10 cent ice cream cone. Yes, sir. I used to sing, brother. And my friends were smoking reefers. I say, hey, I'm down. And I smoked this reefer. And I went back to the nightclub and the music was playing. And I couldn't remember Whether I had sung a chorus or should I go back to the bridge? I, oh, I knew the song. <laughs> I was messed up. So I said, let me try this one more time. <clears throat> and I tried this reefer. I found myself rolling in the street. Had my tie acting like it was a saxophone. Yes, sir. I said, no, this is too much. I said, I don't like this feeling. No, sir. And me and Reefa parted when I was 16. Yes, sir. When I was 13, my boys brought me some liquor. I said, oh, I'm down. And I never will forget it was called Lansdowne yes, Whiskey. <laughs> it wasn't but a half a pint. Yes, sir. But me and my boys, when we got finished with that half a pint, the minister was drunk. Yes, sir. I mean, I wasn't the minister then, brothers. I was. <laughs> the minister was drunk. <clears throat> My mother is a very smart woman. <coughs> I got in the house, Emma, and got to the bed. And when I laid in the bed, the bed started turning. And I said, oh man, I sat up. I said, whoo. I'm tired, man. I got to get some sleep. But every time I laid down, the bed started turning. Finally, I knew I was going to throw up. Yes, and I was trying to make it to the bathroom. And down the hall, I was running. And it came out. And my mother heard it. I said, oh, I'm dead now for sure. <laughs> she came up out of the bed. Stuff all over the floor. Naturally, she smelled the alcohol in the food. And everything. Where you been, Jean? Well, here come the lie. <laughs> I went to the party and, and, and they had some punch. And it was alcohol in the punch. And this alcohol was so strong, it took the varnish off the floor. I imagine what it was doing inside people's stomachs. From that day, man, uh-uh. I don't like this feeling. I'm through with this. Now, why am I telling you this? See, God prepares you if he's going to use you. I had little girls that liked me, but they were my friend's girlfriend. And sometime behind my friend's back, they would come and say, you know, Gene, it's really you. <laughs> and this is the truth, brother. My buddy and I were college roommates, and his girlfriend wrote me a love letter. Talking about when I come home for Christmas, she'll be under the tree. Yes, sir. 
But I value the love and friendship of my brother over any woman. I'm going to say that again. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. See, look, brother, our brotherhood and our friendship should never be compromised over a woman. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. There is no woman worth breaking up the brotherhood. Yes, sir. No woman. If that's your brother's wife, leave her alone. Yes, sir. If that's your friend's girlfriend, leave her alone. Yes, because to cement the strength of our love for one another as men is more critical to our salvation than taking off your brother's wife or your brother's daughter or your brother's sister. You understand what I'm yes, saying? Sir. It's serious now. When my friend came in, I had the letter. I said, brother, I received this letter in the mail from your girlfriend. And I want you to know before I give you the letter that I never said or did anything to encourage this. I gave him the letter. Oh, he was hurt. He was hurt, man. But he knew then, to this day, yes, sir. I'm his brother. Yes, yes, sir. He went home, he broke up with the girl. Yes, sir. That was the end of that. But we, today, still tight. Yes, sir. He became the vice mayor of Boston. Yes, sir. He's not in the fold of Islam, but he's a Muslim. Yes, sir. To me, that's truth in action. Yes, sir. And that brother, though hurt, will stand up on a mountain today and say, that man is honorable. Yes, sir. That's right. Now, with women, being honorable with women. See, this is a thing, brother, this world make you play yes. with each other. Yes, sir. You're right. That's dangerous. Because all we have is our emotions. And to play with each other is to play with death. When I was 16, I learned another lesson. All of this one day will be in a book. Yes, sir. Because these are principles of life. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Principles of life. When you meet a young girl and then you have sex with her, but you don't really respect her, you don't really love her, you don't care too much about her, she becomes a conquest. So you go tell all your buddies, oh man, I had, oh, she. I can't tell you what shame came over me. Now some people say, what the hell with her? That's because you're not born of God. Yes, sir. But I can't help the way you born. That's your thing. I know that I'm born of God. I didn't wait to meet Elijah yes, to be born of God. I was with God and God was with me and in me from my birth. Yes, sir. He only confirmed who I was and what I was yes, and gave it direction. Yes, sir. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Uh, you understand. Good. Go ahead. 
Now, why am I telling you these things? Because in warfare, when you start battling the devil, and I'm not talking about no spirit, I'm talking about the Caucasian reality. Yes, sir. And the weakness of self. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. If you don't have character, you won't last in this war. When I first got started rebuilding the work of Elijah, the Arabs offered me millions of dollars if I would leave this man alone and don't mention his name. I was poor and raggedy. <coughs> I said, not me. You ain't got enough money. Some of my close friends in Hollywood said, Farrakhan, this man got a lot of baggage. You're a leader in your own right. Why go and carry his heavy baggage? I said, that's my teacher. And I can't use his wisdom and not give him the credit for it. So I'll just have to accept that baggage. That's right. Yes, sir. That's right. When I was in Gabon in May, Reverend Shula, you remember Reverend Shula? He preaches on television all the time. He was in Gabon with us. And when we sat down one morning at breakfast, and we were speaking, he said to me, he said, uh, Mr. Farrakhan, he said, when I pack, I only take in my bags what I can carry. I never travel taking on excess baggage. Well, you know, when people of wisdom talk, they say something here that has a root way down there. Well, I wasn't looking so much at this. I was looking at the root of it. And I said to Reverend Shula, I said, Reverend, Jesus said, take my yoke upon you. For my yoke is easy. And my burden is light. No man comes to Christ except you carry his baggage and his baggage may be heavy to a disbeliever but it's light to the believer now i say all of that to tell you what brings me to this hour yes sir i am your brother that's all I ever wanted to be. Yes, no big shot. I just want to be your brother. Your brother, sister. Yes, sir. When the nation was down and we decided to lift it up again, I knew that ministers had a bad reputation. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. People didn't trust ministers of the honorable Elijah Muhammad because the word had gone out that they were thieves and robbers and abusers of the women. Some were, but the majority were good people. So now I got a witness that Brother Farrakhan helped build this nation without asking the brothers or sisters to give me. Yeah. It started in my house, in my basement, with my faithful wife as the secretary. And you ain't never had to worry about no money. She didn't go to college. Just, no, didn't even finish high school. But if you want good books kept, let her keep it. <laughs> you don't need to be a college graduate if you're honest. Yes, sir. That's right. 
You can have all the degrees in the world and you need that to cover your crooked tracks. Yes, and you never end up balancing the books because you're liars and you're a bunch of damn thieves. Yes, sir, sir. But Sister Farrakhan is an honest woman, yes, a woman of high character. And in our basement, the nation began. I mortgaged my house to start the final call. Think about that. I went on speaking tour in colleges, getting $1,000 per speech. And I would speak sometimes in the month of February, every day, different parts of the country. But at the end of the month, I would have secured about twenty to $25,000. And with that money, I went and bought all of the old books. Message to the Black Man, How to Eat to Live, Fall of America. Our Savior has arrived, the prayer book, the flag of Islam. I bought everything that Dr. Salam had that Waters Dean would not let the American Muslim mission sell. I bought it all for $19,000 and turned it over to the community and never asked for a dime back. I wrote the first Final Call newspaper from cover to cover by myself and the second newspaper from cover to cover by myself one young lady in Washington DC and I saw her for the first time in 16 years in 14 years last Sunday came up out of the audience she was the girl that helped me because she had the typing skills yeah and for years, the paper gave jobs to many. Didn't give a dime back to the founder. That's right. I took my money and bought the Final Call building and turned it over to the Muslims. My name ain't on nothing. You say, Farrakhan's a fool. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. I was proven to you why you should support me. Yes, sir. Because I won't rob you. Yes, sir. And I can't be bought. And they can't frighten me to stop telling you the truth. Right. Do you know what that means to have that kind of man in front of you? Yes, sir. Do you know what you got? I wouldn't allow the Muslims to buy nothing in that final call building when we opened it up but the chairs. I put the carpet on the floor. I bought the paint and we painted. I bought the air conditioner. Everything in there. I bought with the money that came to me from speeches made around the country and from the personal gifts of people to Louis Farrakhan. And now you got one of the most beautiful uh, buildings for, of a newspaper in the country. Ain't no black newspaper got a building beautiful like that. What am I saying to you? I was being prepared all along for the big fight. And who's the big fight with? Unfortunately, the big fight is with those who have controlled black people ever since our fathers were brought to America. And they don't want you to know that it was Jews who were the big slave traders, slave makers, 
slave masters, ship owners. Yes, they don't want you to know that. Do you know why? Do you know why? Because Jews at this very moment are getting reparations from Germany. The Germans are paying money to the Jews for the evil that Germany put on the Jews. And if Farrakhan can expose what they did, then the natural thing is to say to them, all right, you got money, huh? You got power, huh? You own the Federal Reserve Bank, don't you? The bank that prints the money. We want reparations. That's right. Not only from Jews. We want it from Arabs. Yes, sir. We want it from our African brothers that help sell us. That's right. And we want it from Gentiles and the government of the United States of America. All of them acted in a conspiracy yes, to destroy us and put us in the condition that we're in. Yes, that is truth. Yes, sir. Now, what good is truth if you don't have somebody to tell it? You can't have a lie unless you have a liar, somebody to tell a lie. And you'll never know the truth until God finds the right vessel to tell it. That's right. 